So let's spend some time in this video talking about DNA, chromosomes, chromatin, genes, and, and how all these relate to one another. So let's start with DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. And in the cell it exists what we call double-stranded, meaning we have two strands of DNA that are held together. So let's draw one strand of DNA. We'll, we'll draw this as if this was the backbone of the DNA molecule. And coming off the backbone, we have the individual bases. So remember that the, the backbone of DNA is the sugar phosphate backbone. So it, it's the same for all the nucleotides. However, each DNA nucleotide, there are four different types, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. So the DNA alphabet is only made up of these four letters. So let's say that we have a certain sequence of these letters on this DNA strand. Okay. These are G's. Now, this sequence would be as if you were reading a sentence in a book, right? These, the sequence of these nucleotides is important. And, and if we talk about genes, we're essentially saying a finite amount of these nucleotides on a specific location um, in the genome, in the total genome. So we're going to look at what we mean by that. So let's say in, in this little section of DNA, in this one strand, this is the nucleotide sequence, A, C, G, T, A, C, C, so on and so forth. Well, there's going to be an opposite strand that's going to be complementary to this strand because they exist as double-stranded. So it, it turns out that DNA pairs in a specific way. We call those base pairs. And adenine always pairs with thymine. Cytosine always pairs with, with uh, guanine. And so we can go through and we can write out the base pairing for the other strand. Now these two strands are held together by something called hydrogen bonding between the bases and there are two hydrogen bonds between the ATs and three between the CGs. Okay, So the CG base pair is a little bit stronger than the AT base pair. So this would be a, a, a short section of double-stranded DNA that we're looking at. Now what you see over here in this first box is as if you took the strand that we just drew out and you twisted it so that this ribbon right here that's twisted in a helix would be this ribbon here, the backbone of this sequence. And the other ribbon would be the backbone of this sequence. And the little colors are indicating whether it's an A or a C or a T or a G um, base, nucleotide base, on, on that particular nucleotide. So this part right here that we drew out exists in this twisted ladder, and we call that a double helix. That is DNA. Now, our, our entire human genome has three billion of these base pairs. Okay, that would be one base pair. We also have 23 pair of chromosomes. So you can divide that 3 billion by 23 chromosomes and see that that's, you're going to have millions and millions of nucleotide base pairs on each chromosome. That means you have lots of genes on any particular chromosome. Now a gene is just a certain amount of these nucleotide base, base pairs that happen to code for a specific protein product. And we'll get to that later in the semester. But what I want us to focus on today is what is chromatin and what is chromosomes, or what are chromosomes. These are just states of the DNA molecule itself. So we already spoke about the double helix. We know what that looks like. It's sort of a twisted ladder of these DNA, the double strands of DNA that are base pairing together. Now, the, this um, double-stranded DNA it would be too long, it, it couldn't possibly fit into the nucleus of a cell. So it has to actually be condensed into a little different form. And the way that that works is this DNA sequence actually gets wrapped around 
what are called histone proteins. And there are eight of them, okay, that come together. And the DNA then, this twisted ladder DNA, actually gets wrapped around those eight histone proteins. The whole thing, in other words, the DNA helix that's wrapped around those eight histone proteins, that whole thing is called a nucleosome. So you can see here that we see the DNA double helix being wrapped around the histone proteins. And then you see that this little section here is actually one of those nucleosomes where the DNA is wrapped around the eight hist histone proteins. This state of DNA right here we refer to as chromatin. So the chromatin includes not only the DNA helix, but it also includes these proteins in which the DNA is coiled around or wrapped around. So to a certain extent, at that point, the DNA has been packaged, right? It's been condensed around these proteins. Okay, we look further, and this is still considered chromatin, but the DNA is packed even tighter or condensed tighter around these uh, additional proteins. Um, and we can call that the, the DNA has become condensed, right? It's condensing around these proteins. Okay, as the DNA becomes its most compact form or its most condensed form is when it looks like the chromosome structures that we recognize. So you see that each state of this, the DNA gets more highly wound, more highly packaged, until ultimately, the, as you can imagine, one, one little section of the arm of this chromosome contains this chromatin, right, which contains many, many base pairs of the linear double-stranded DNA. So the difference between chromatin and, and a chromosome is just how tightly that DNA, that double-stranded DNA, has been wound or packaged around the proteins. In the cell, the only time that DNA is going to exist in this state, in the chromosome state, is during cell division. And there's two types of cell division that we're going to talk about. The first is mitosis, and the second is meiosis. Now something else I want us to talk about is this image that you're looking at, which is called a karyotype. Okay, A karyotype is basically like a picture of the chromosomes in a cell. And as I mentioned to you, in, in a human cell, or a human normal body cell, which we call somatic, Okay, I'm going to put this, that means body cell, a regular cell of your body, has 23 pair of chromosomes. So this karyotype represents a particular cell's chromosome makeup. And these chromosomes have been fluorescently labeled so that it's easy to identify them. Um, the point of a karyotype is to look at what is the chromosomal state of a cell. So for example, an amniocentesis looks at the chromosomes in a cell. Um, a biopsy for a possible tumor looks at the chromosome number and type in a cell. And so you see that these chromosomes are ordered from number 1 all the way to 22. They don't really look like that inside the cell, right? But um, a, a person who's trained to, to deal with these kinds of microscopic images started with something that looked like this, right, with all the chromosomes, and where the computer program has ordered them into this box here based on their size and, and composition from, from the pair of 1s all the way to the sex chromosomes. Now, all of them are paired, okay, except for this last pair. In this case, these happen to be an exact pair because it's two X's. So this is a female, right? This particular cell is a female. 
where it wouldn't be an exact pair would be in, in a male, you would have one X and one Y chromosome. Okay. Now I want to talk about another type of chromosome count in a cell, and that is in the sex cells, which we also call the gametes. This would be egg and sperm. Okay, these don't have 23 pairs. They only have 23 chromosomes. And that's because an egg has 23 chromosomes. A sperm has 23 chromosomes. When fertilization happens and the egg and the sperm fuse, then you have restored the 23 pair. Okay, that's how we have one set of chromosomes from mom and one set of chromosomes from dad because what each the sperm and the egg each carried a set and the first new cell the zygote has a set from both parents in that cell okay we call um, the somatic cells in our body we call those diploid okay diploid or 2n means two copies of each chromosome the sex cells then are haploid and we can just represent those with n because there's a, there would only be one copy of each chromosome in either the egg or the sperm cell.